with Ida the Owl Lady from the Owl House. <laughs> it's spooky month, so I'll be drawing Owl House characters all through October. And for those who don't hang out in my community tab, I had a vote on who I would draw after Amity and surprise, Ida won. Well, not too surprising. She's probably the number one fan favorite character. Sorry, Luce, I know you're the main character, but Ida's the goat. Or well, Al. Anyway though, I can honestly say she's my favorite character, she's the main reason I stuck with the show, cause surprise, I was not a fan of the first episode, it really felt preachy, or at the very least, like, too in your face with its message, and episode 2 and 3 were nice for the world building and character introductions, but by episode 4, wow, Ida stole the show, but yeah, episode four really solidified my love for the show and the bigger picture of what was to come. I also love that Ida is great representation for the chronic illness community. When they introduce the curse, a lot of what Ida does and has to do to keep herself feeling like herself all feels and looks like what people with chronic illness go through. I have a few family members who have similar routines and it honestly felt good to see and made me love her character even more as she was still fun and active. You know, she wasn't letting her curse get in her way. Though in later seasons, I do like how she tries to hide how she feels and keeps rain in the dark. As it's hard to tell anyone about these things, many people don't want to seem weak or feel like a burden. So Ida hiding her curse from the people she cares about really hits home. Ida as a whole is such a human feeling character. She never feels truly extreme. Yes, she has a curse and is kind of wacky, but there's a lot of like really deep moments mixed in helping her feel so real, even all the way to the end, which I am so happy Ida's characters survived the cancellation because wow, so many characters got slapped so hard they don't even remember who they are anymore. Though to be fair, Ida's character did get rocked at the end of season one and a, and a bit of the start of season two. And kind of what I mean by that, like it wasn't super monumental or huge, but it was like mainly her and Lilith, cause while I like that Ida had come to terms with her curse, it still felt odd she let Lilith slide. Like yeah, you took on the curse for me to save me, but you, you know, still cursed me. Plus, it only been a few days of her finding out her own sister did that to her and never said anything till they were in their 40s. So yeah, I was hoping Ida would be a bit more standoffish, like not completely against her sister cause yeah, she's also cursed now, but a little bit of hostility would have been nice. That, that, that's the only character issue that I have with Ida. But other than that, Ida had a pretty solid run, even with the introduction of Rain, which I like how they worked in Ida's past romance and friendship with Rain. No hate again to Lumity, but I kind of prefer it more when kid characters start off as friends and then date. Which, like, I can't really say if Amity and Luce were friends before dating, cause, like, they barely did much outside of school. Low-key, it felt like an in-school relationship than an outside one, but eh. But still, uh, I also like that Ida and Rain broke up. You don't see that very often in kids' media or the characters dating other people. Like, yeah, we don't have solid proof Ida dated anyone else except Stan Pines, which they technically didn't date, but had, like, a Vegas speedrun wedding, but still. But Ida's pretty smooth and fun, so I'm sure she had her fair share of flings after she and Rain broke up, which makes me love her even more, since unfortunately, animated kids media always makes it seem like dating more than one person or not ending up with the person you started liking first is the end of the world. Genuinely, I would kill for a character to date someone, break up, and then end up either alone and be fine with it, or to end up with like the most unusual yet slightly makes sense choice. You know, show kids it's okay that your first love isn't your forever love and that some people don't stay with their childhood crush or get back together and stay together. I mean, as a kid who didn't know they were ace, it was really hard to understand why I wasn't fitting in with the media standards or love. Plus I have a stepdad and my mom's childhood boyfriend ended up marrying a man. So yeah, I wish this trope would kind of like, not not completely disappear because this does happen. You know, there are childhood sweethearts and all that crap, but I do wish there was like 
more variety in kids media when it came to dating or relationships in general. I'm tired of it being the standard and as much as I love the Owl House, they also fall into this trope because you have Luce and Amity who start dating when they're like 14 and then we see the epilogue, they're still together. And then you have Ida and Rain who meet when they're kids as well. We don't know when they start dating, but they do kind of like hint that they're back together. I know it was never truly 100% confirmed. And then you have Willow's parents as well. And then you even see Amity's parents, who also probably paired up when they were young and got married, but you but they get divorced. And then you even have Bosch's parents in the background as well. And it's just like, please stop showing childhood sweethearts that end up getting together and having kids. Like, I'm so, so irritating. It's so tiring. I hate the trope so much. Mm, sorry, sorry. Got off topic. Uh, <laughs> I like Ida. I think she's a really fun character overall. So, you know, let's just get into the design because I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> okay, so I genuinely love Ida's design. I think she's my second favorite designed character. She has a very unique face shape and body shape. I mean, look at her shoulders. Amazing. Her little details like her gold fang and her hair shape giving her face the appearance of a barn owl, but not too much that you notice it at first glance since we don't know she's cursed till episode four and I only assumed she was called the owl lady due to her palisman. I mean, even her eyes are gold, which is the main eye color for owls. Ugh. But I will say I love her season one fit way better than her season two fit. Like the dress isn't my problem. I genuinely like that Ida leans more to dresses and makeup. It's just the fact that it's colored and looks too identical to her old fit. Like Luz, Gus, and Willow, and Hunter get like a full new looks, yet Ida's still rocking the same silhouette and colors. Don't get me wrong, I get why Ida wears red as a possible nod to the Bard Coven, but the lack of gold hurts. As for me, the gold was always a hint to her connections to her track in potions and her magic's color. And yeah, I guess it makes some sense. The gold is gone now due to her lack of magic, but still, I genuinely miss it. So that's why I put it back in her redesign. For her redesign look, I decided to try something new, but still keep the overall silhouette of her outfit. But I also wanted to mix in her season three look as well. So it'll hint to what's to come for her style wise. So I put her in this like coat dress. The ends are meant to look like a conductor's tail, but backwards due to how conventional Ida is. The collar of her coat is, you guessed it, feathers. I really wanted to push the bird theme Ida has, cause like season two is where Ida becomes one with her curse. So I wanted the more feathery side of her outfit to hint to what Ida will go through. Also, I know I gave Ida sleeves, but yeah, later you'll see I took them away. I think I realized how much I actually hate Ida in sleeves or maybe I just hate like fully covered characters. Like Ida already wears tights and now they put her in long sleeves. No thanks. Also, this means I can make the markings on her arm longer, which like I love that after Lilith takes on part of Ida's curse, Ida's eye color changes and she gets an extra gray stripe, but I feel they could have done more. Like why is the eye gray for one thing? Isn't Beast Ida's eyes more dark green? Unless they're trying to say it's an old lady thing, you know, when you get so old your eyes turn a muted color, but yeah, nah. So for that I made the white of her eye more grayed out to give the illusion the owl beast is looking through Ida. And yeah, I also made her hands gray like her beast form. Well, her back feet's color, but still. Because I mean, think about it. She went full beast mode and lost her magic in the process. And obviously sharing the curse did something to her and Lilith. Plus, Ida has had the curse for so long. I figured a more dramatic look could show the effects a bit more than just her old age. Plus, cause I thought it looked cool. <laughs> now her underdress is like a mix of her season one dress and season two dress, AKA no sleeves like season one and a heart shaped bodice top with a different color under neck. Again, it's in yellow cause I love yellow on Ida and cause it hints to her magic. Now her tights on the other hand are actually pants, again to hint to her survivor outfit and her principal outfit as she'll start wearing pants during season three and the epilogue and her shoes. I basically drew the same boots she always wears just with some gold lines and a bit more about her features 
Because while I do love Ida's features, I have the same issue I have with Amity, so Ida's parents have very unique features, and while Ida clearly did get a good mix, I still feel like more could have poked through, or at the very least, they could have gone harder with the wrinkles, because yes, Ida does age faster, and we see that she's a little close to her parents' age, yet she has no wrinkles, so I did give her more prominent laugh lines and eye lines, as for features themselves, I just reworked her nose, not too much as it's still pointed up like her mom's, but now has a hump similar to Dell's. I always liked that Ida favored her dad more in appearance, especially her hair, so I really wanted her connection to him to shine through. Plus, I really wanted her and Lilith to look different because, again, we got another case of same face syndrome, and no, I checked, they're not twins. Oh, also, I gave Ida weird eyebrows. Not entirely sure if I like it, but eh. You know, I'll, I'll play with it later. Uh, as for hair, I kept it the same. I saw no reason to change the shape or style other than making her widow's peak deeper and like her forehead sides more round to sell that barn owl look, but I did color it differently, mostly to match how the owl beast makes her hair, but also because while Ida is gray, she should still have some pigment left. I mean, look at her mom and dad. They still have hues to their old hair colors, so why can't Ida? Also, I did give Ida some color on her skin because the pure white skin is crazy when both parents aren't even that pale. And I know Ida goes outside, so she can't use the same excuse Lilith uses. Oh, also, sorry, almost forgot. I curved Ida's ears a bit. A again, a nod to the curse, but I did also make her ears bigger. Since Ida seems to come from an extremely strong magical family, I like to think the stronger your magic is, the longer your ears are. Because like a little bit of AU here, but like think how shocked everyone would be when they see Bellows and see how small his ears are and are like, what? He has all these abilities with small ears? Crazy, right? <laughs> Anyway, though, that's about it. Sorry there's no AU stuff. I genuinely liked where Ida's character went. And other than some episodes not being needed towards the end, she came out of it pretty on top. So, yeah. But also, yeah, that like, sorry this is so short. Ida's design was, like, pretty simple. I mean, Ida's design in general is really relatively simple. It's just the smaller details within her design that are very interesting and noticeable. Like, I always found that drawing Ida was so much easier than drawing the rest of the cast because of how simplified a lot of Ida's design really was compared to everyone else. So, sorry this went so fast. I can't help it. Ida is basically a very simple design. However, she does give the illusion that she is very detailed, which I do really like about her top-notch, top-notch character design. Ugh. But anyway, uh, I'm still not 100% happy with the design I made, but I am happy where it ended up because I remade this look like four times, which like honestly surprised me because I didn't think it was going to be this tough, but it really was at the end of it. <laughs> Next on the chopping block will be Hunter. Yay! The character I have so much to say about because... Mm, nope, nope, hold it in. <laughs> But yeah, get ready for that. It's gonna be a lot. <laughs> Bear with me, please. Anyway, uh, but anyway, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if possible, become a member so I could scream your name. <laughs> really helps out the channel and me. I hope you all have a super fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!